Hello everyone, welcome to episode 7 of Craig Talks Shite and you can probably tell I've got my gum guard back in because I'm annoying my partner with my constant sucking on my teeth. This episode is something that's a great deal of frustration and pride for myself and I want to feel like I'm sharing a little bit of wisdom and potential insight for the first time buyer. I took the plunge in 2020, which was a great fucking time to move right as the pandemic kicked off. But we managed to basically get our house sale through and move essentially when the lockdown was just about to start. We had an incredibly frustrating experience when we bought our first property. On the surface of things, everything looked great. It was an old miner's cottage. We decided to move out of Edinburgh. We knew that we would get more for our money if we moved to the outskirts. Which is weird because now where I am, technically I'm further away from the city centre. But I can get in quicker in the mornings on the train than I used to be able to when I lived on the outskirts of Edinburgh. The whole world of home ownership was alien to me. I'd never got a mortgage before. I'd never dealt with solicitors before. I'd never dealt with other sellers before. And it's funny because it seems like whatever happens, the bank wins. You phone up the people who are helping you with your purchase and they're like, right, we found a mortgage product for you. So you can borrow this money and over 30 years, it's going to cost you this. But not only that, you need to pay for the mortgage product. What the fuck is a mortgage product? What do they actually have to do to provide you with this product other than put it through a system at the bank's end. You're already taking like 30 years of debt with them, but not only that, they just think, I will stick a wee bit on top at the start just to really turn the knife, you know? We moved into this cottage. It's an older cottage. It is beautiful. It's over 100 years old. And that maybe should have told us that everything wasn't going to be plain sailing when we moved in. But the previous owner seemed to just sort of paper over the cracks rather than actually dealing with anything. And I do mean literal cracks as well as metaphorical. So we were like literally a day in to our first home and the fucking boiler broke. Middle of December, fucking freezing, no heat in the house. We hadn't even brought our bed yet. We were just kind of going back and forward for the place that we used to live. Stupid idiot here was like, ah, you know, we'll no need the bed for the first couple of nights. So what did we do? Slept on the floor. Slept on the floor like a couple of like DOS housers. And you would have seen the nick of the carpets, by the way. I borrowed a carpet cleaner off my auntie and uncle because I thought, you know, you just never know how the other person lived. Honestly, I don't know what this previous owner was doing the place, but it looked like she'd got a dirty arse and just wiped it all over the carpet. She had about four cats as well. Even to this day, we're finding cat hair in places that doesn't belong to our cat. Genuinely, within a week of me moving here, I almost had a breakdown. I honestly was questioning whether or not this was the right thing to do. And they deceive you in like the fucking adverts. Like, come and take your mortgage with this bank and get on the property ladder. You can have your first home with us. And it shows you it's like fucking this couple, they're up on ladders, they're painting the ceilings and all this and that. I think for the first like year in this place, me and my partner just argued about stuff because it was that dreadful. And I'm not trying to put you off buying your first home because it has literally made me a stronger person. I feel like I can deal with anything now. But be prepared. It's not like they show you on the adverts. You're not sitting eating a fucking pizza on the floor as you, you know, choose your colour palettes for the room. You're sitting in a pissing cold room with no boiler on a fucking camp bed or on the carpet as we did for the first night. And then like you're thinking, Jesus Christ, I paid over a hundred grand for this experience. I got into this crazy mindset when I moved into this place and I was like, this doesn't feel like my home. I said this to my partner. I was being totally serious. I could empathise with, you know, those dogs that you see at the shelters when they're in cages and they feel like they don't want to come out of the cage. That was like me for the first like two or three days, maybe even longer. I didn't even want to go upstairs. I was that like overwhelmed by everything that had taken place before I'd even moved into the place. And now I'm sitting in a pissing cold house thinking, I left my mum and dad's for this. But like I said, it did make me a stronger person. So aside from the broken boiler, we're outside one night and we're going, I can smell, this smells a bit like gas. This is a bit weird. Later that night we came back and I'm like, no, nah, I can still smell gas coming right next to our back door. Our neighbour's like standing smoking a fag. And I'm like that, I think you should go inside. I think we've got a gas leak. Go inside, we phone the gas board. Bladdy turns up in the middle of the night. It's got his wee sniffer, it's like, shh, shh, shh. It's like, oh aye, there's definitely a gas leak here, like. Oh aye, where's it? Where is it? He's like, oh, it's coming out this nipple. I didn't even know the thing was called a nipple. It has to remove the gas meter and fit a new one. Everything's resolved. Literally a day later, we get a knock at the door for the guy for the gas board. Oh, hi there, I believe you got a new gas meter yesterday. Aye, we did. Oh, I'm really sorry about this, but uh, my colleague's actually fitted one for the national grid. It should be a Scottish gas one. So then he had to take the second gas meter out and replace it with the proper one. For the first, like, three months, our bills were fucking all over the place. The gas companies are like, 
we didn't care what's going on here, we'll just charge you the fucking maximum. That's another thing, by the way. See, when you've not been used to paying your own bills, you're like, oh, wait a minute. How does the gas bill work? Because you pay more than what you actually use potentially and then they refund it provided they get your bill right in the first place or provided they put the right gas meter in, which they didn't twice. After that, I was starting to feel like, okay, maybe getting into a wee flow here, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm going to start taking up the carpets. I'm going to have a look under these carpets and see what's there. So I start ripping up these disgusting, dirty carpets, right? And what did I find in the spare room? Woodworm, these little like holes in the ground. I've never dealt with woodworm before. But we knew there was something going on, because that was the other thing with the carpets. They weren't just dirty. We found, like, these little beetles in them. We're like, what the fuck are they? You know what I mean? It was like the house of horrors. It just kept getting worse. And I'm like, right, okay, great. So we've got beetles in the carpet. The carpet's stinky shite. And we've got a broken gas meter outside. I had to get somebody in to treat the woodworm, which meant I took up all the carpets in here. Idiot here, didn't they think, eh? We were in the middle of the lockdown. Couldn't they get a tradesman for months? And I tell you the farce of this, by the way. Remember in the second lockdown, it was like tradesmen weren't they allowed to work unless it was emergencies only. I was in a local village, right? And I'm driving through the village. And I see this van, I think they were like joiners or something like that, and they're all ducking behind this garden wall. And then all of a sudden, they just take off running. And I'm like, what's going on here? And I look around, there's a police car coming down the street. They just done a legger. They just ran. They just ran down the side of the house and fucked off and left the client. That was the madness we were living in. So not only did we move into a house that was completely alien to me, we moved at the time that was the most uncertain in my whole lifetime. And we're having to deal with shit like fucking woodworm. So anyway, we got a woodworm treated. And then I'm like, right, cool. Let's get a joiner in to do the floors. Could not get a joiner for loving their money. So what are we left with? Suspended timber floors. They were like that for close to a year. Honestly, it was like we were living in a smack house. So I'm like, well, what can I do in the meantime to at least make the place mildly presentable? So I'm like, I know what I'll do. I'll just start stripping all the fucking wallpaper off the walls. Thinking, oh, it'll be just like the adverts, Ken, what I mean? I'll just paint them and it'll look beautiful. Nah, nah. Cracks all over them. So that was the next thing. I had to try and find a plasterer in to try and make the walls tidy before I could actually paint them. So not only have we got no flares, we've got walls that look like they're off a condemned building. I'm thinking to myself, like, what have I done here? What have I actually done? I feel like I'm living in a DOS house. So eventually we got a plaster in. Great guy, did a great job. All the walls were set. Started painting. Painted the living room. Starting to look a wee bit more like, you know, the house that we wanted to move into. My partner said to me one day before she left, listen, just leave the spare room. I'll come and help you. It's newly plastered. It's ready to go. I'll just see when I'm not busy and I can come and give you a hand. I wasn't working at the time. Zero furlough either. I was self-employed. I was living off my savings. So I'm like, well... I may as well just crack on with the house, eh? I didn't listen to her. Of course, I'm a man, eh? I didn't listen to what my partner says, even though most of the time she actually makes sense. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get cracking on with this other room. And I'm thinking, should I put any sheets down for the paint? Should I put dust sheets down? <sighs> you know what? We've only got floorboards, eh? It doesn't really matter if they get covered in paint. Idiot. So the first painter we got in, he did an alright job, but I was looking at him thinking, can I can do that? It's not that difficult to paint a wall, which I didn't think it is, but you've got to be organised. I'm no fucking organised. So I started cracking on. I remember this thing he said to me. He's like, normally when you put a first coat on new plaster, eh? You just give it a wee mix with some water. Like 50% mix or something like that. So I'm like, right, sound put in. And I'm mixing this paint. And I'm like, that looks awfully watery, like. That looks very watery. So I get the roller. What's the first thing that happens? I go to do the roof. Cover myself in fucking paint. Head to toe. I look like Casper, the fucking friendly ghost. About an hour later, my missus comes in, sees a paint footprint on the deck. I'm like, Denny, worry, I'm going to clean it up. She came through and she had this look on her face that just looked like, you're a fucking idiot. And you know what? She was right. I should have waited, but I like to do everything myself. Eh? I like to make my life more difficult than it actually is. I can't complain too much because we've had a lot of generosity. My family have been brilliant. My mum and dad have helped me out a lot. My auntie and uncle have helped me out a lot. You know, we wouldn't be living in the house that we're living in now if it wasn't for their generosity. Here's a little tip for you, by the way, if you're going to buy a property and you're next to someone on either side, if you're a first-time buyer, find out if the people on either side of you own their house. Because if they don't and it's a let property, it can be a fucking nightmare to get in touch with the landlord if you need something done. And who needed something done? We did. What did we need done? We had a leak in our roof, but because we've got a fucking shared wall, I had to get permission off the other person. Took months to get it agreed. What are pissing in, in the upstairs room? Honestly, the back and forwards I had to actually get to the point where I could just get a lead flashing put on my roof was insane. After the whole incident in the downstairs room, I'm thinking, the walls are decorated. 
Still no floors, but I thought, you know what? I'm kind of happy at the moment. We didn't have any carpets in the downstairs living room. We didn't have any carpets in the downstairs bedroom. We didn't have any carpets in the downstairs hall. And we didn't have any carpets in the upstairs hall. Literally, the only carpet we have left in our house is our bedroom at this point. And it's absolutely honking. We didn't even get a chance to use the carpet cleaner up there. We still got that carpet because eventually I just at this point where I went, I can't do this anymore. And then thankfully we managed to find a great guy who came and did our flooring just before Christmas time. So I'm thinking, right, there's only really a couple of rooms left to do. There's the upstairs, but there's a watermark on the roof which just came from the leak. So I'm not going to do that just now. I'm going to have to go into the attic and resolve all that. So I'm thinking, let's just take a wee pause. The only rooms that were really bothering me were the bathroom and the utility room. You know what's coming, eh? My partner goes out to water the garden. We've got an outside tap. At this point, I was working in the living room. So I hear her turning on the outside tap. And I'm thinking, that's weird. That tap sounds awfully loud. So I open the door to the utility room and there's a fucking waterfall coming through the light fittings in the bathroom and the utility room. I'm just standing there. I have a total meltdown, brain malfunction. I'm like, I don't care what to do here. I do not know what to do. By the way, the best money I ever spent, and it's entirely up to yourselves, I'm no influencing anyone, was a home emergency policy. You think to yourself, oh, Ken, like, it's just like renting a place. You've got, like, your rent. You've got your council tax. You've got your bills. You've got your home insurance. You've got your home emergency. It's just like a never-ending black hole of money. So see if you're going to buy a place. Make sure you've got savings, by the way, because it'll eat up like a fat lad at a buffet. You have no idea how expensive the first home is if things didn't go the way you think they're going to go. I go out to the utility room, and it's literally a waterfall. So I'm like, right, I need to find the stopcock. So we pull out the washing machine. Turn off the stopcock, nothing. Literally the water is still coming through the ceilings. Still coming through the ceilings. I had to phone my home emergency policy and say, look, I've turned the stopcock off. This hang's no stopping. They weren't going to send anyone out till the next day. I'm like, if you do that, the whole house is going to flood. Oh, and another thing I forgot to tell you, New Year's Day. We've got through the Christmas period where Hank and I, everything's all right. A fucking puddle starts coming out from underneath our washing machine. We're like, what is going on here? We pulled out the washing machine and there's this pipe that's been left open with a tap on it, it's just coming out like a drinking fountain. That was another one I had to phone the home emergency again, get them to come out. Guy had to replace it. It's one thing after another here. Because our bathroom and our utility room was flooded, we had to get the assessors out to come and tell us if we had a claim or not. So anyway, the assessors come out, they start looking at it. Cool, right, we'll be back in touch. So, first day comes out, the guys start lifting up the floorboards. There's the old floor tiles from the original house. Guys like that, oh, I think that might be asbestos, mate. Another thing. We had to take a sample of the tiles and we had to wait two weeks before we could find out if it was asbestos or not. Thankfully it wasn't. But again, these are things that you didn't even think about when you're moving into your first house. You're just thinking, everything's going to be plain sailing. Guys are like, right, your work's going to be starting on this date. So I'm like, cool. First day, the plumber turns up, starts taking the sink off, the toilet off, the shower off. I'm like, oh, um, what's going on with that? Is that going to get put back on once you take the tiles off? Oh no, have you not got another bathroom? Nobody asked if we had two bathrooms. Nobody asked if we had two bathrooms. They just assumed because we've got an upstairs, there was a bathroom upstairs. They were literally going to leave us for weeks without a bathroom. They were like, oh, well, there'll be a portal coming, come in, but it's really just for the guys that are working here. Right, okay, well, that doesn't really help us because we've still not got a shower. So literally, whilst we were negotiating with the insurance company, we were like a week without showering in washing facilities. I was having to go back to my mum and dad's. My partner was having to stay at my mum and dad's because she was working in Edinburgh. Thinking to myself, you know, should we just stay here? Should we just sack this? Ken, what I mean? Should we just get in touch with the bank and say, Ken, what? Just take the house back, eh? But when you take a step back and you look at everything you achieve and you look at where you are now versus where you started, it's quite satisfying. We now have a home that feels like a home rather than moving in to somebody else's shitstorm. And you know, it was four weeks of having to use a portal outside, literally going outside, middle of the night, middle of November, freezing head torch on, opening this door, going in, and we were saying like, oh, you take a piss and it's like having a four dumper. Because every time you get a certain point of the portal loo filling up, it's like, good dunk, good dunk, good dunk. You're sitting out there having a shite in a plastic box and you can hear like foxes and owls basically fucking laughing at you. But in a weird way, it was kind of grounding. You know what I mean? It made you think like some people have nothing. Okay, this is a small inconvenience because when it's all finished, it's going to look great. So here we are two years down the line. And you know what? I'm sure I've probably forgotten multiple things that happened, but this is just a little insight to having your first home and what to expect if things go wrong like they did for us. Just be prepared 
it's no all plain sailing. But you know what? At the end of it, you put the work in and you have something that's truly yours. Unless you run out of money, then you'll have to sell it. Or if you can't sell it, the fucking bank will take it anyway. Like I said, the bank always wins.